हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम राम हरे 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 कृष्णा सो डियर फ्रेंड्स वी आर कंटिन्यूइंग अवर स्टडी ऑफ श्रीमद भागवतम व्हिच इज कंसीडर्ड टू बी द राइप एंड फ्रूट ऑफ द डिजायर ट्री ऑफ द वैदिक लिटरेचर वी आर रीडिंग फ्रॉम वर्स नंबर 16 This is chapter twenty-six, entitled "Wonderful Krishna." This is from the tenth canto of Shrimad Bhagavatam, and we are going to read um, verses sixteen through twenty-three, I believe. So let's get started. Um, Shri Nanda Baba, the father of Krishna, Nanda Maharaj, he is narrating what Shri Gargamuni had told him. previously when krishna was born so this is gargamuni speaking to nanda baba and nanda baba is narrating this conversation to the brijvasis the residents of vrindavan <clears throat> varnastraya kilasyasan grinato nu yugam tanu shuklo raktas tatha pita idanim krishna tam gatah all translations and purports are by the humble disciples of our beloved founder acharya his divine grace abhay charana arvind bhakti vedanta swami maharaj shri prabhupad all glories to shri prabhupad translation shri gargamuni had said your son krishna appears as an incarnation in every millennium every millennium means in every yuga satya yug treta yug dwapar yug kal yug in the past krishna assumed three different colors white red and yellow and now he has appeared in a blackish color purport this and the next six verses 17th verse through 22nd verse are taken from the 8th chapter of this canto in which shri gargamuni instructs shri nanda maharaj about nanda nandan krishna krishna the son of nanda maharaj he instructs gargamuni instructs the father about the glories of his own son the translations found here in for these verses are based on those of his divine grace ac bhakti vedanta swami prabhupada in chapter 8 where the verses originally appear the reader will find extensive purports by shila prabhupad and because all of you at the bhakti center have been reading verse by verse i'm sure you have studied the 8th chapter where shila prabhupad who translated and wrote purports until the 13th chapter of the 10th canto um, so you have already read those purports text 17 pragayam vasudevasya kochijjata stavatmajah वासुदेव इति श्रीमान अभिज्ञा संप्रचक्षते फॉर मेनी रीजंस दिस ब्यूटीफुल सन ऑफ योर्स कृष्णा समटाइम्स अपीयर्ड प्रीवियसली एज द सन ऑफ वसुदेव महाराज देयरफॉर दोस हु आर लर्नड समटाइम्स कॉल दिस चाइल्ड वासुदेव द सन ऑफ वसुदेव इज कॉल्ड वासुदेव वन ऑफ द नेम्स ऑफ कृष्णा बहुनी सन्ति सुत गुणकर्मा तानहम वेदनो जना फॉर दिस सन ऑफ योर्स देर आर मेनी फॉर्म्स एंड नेम्स अकॉर्डिंग टू हिस्स ट्रांसेंडेंटल क्वालिटीज एंड एक्टिविटीज दीज आर नोन टू मी बट पीपल इन जनरल डू नॉट नो दैम हरे कृष्ण in bhagavad gita also krishna is addressed by many names and shila prabhupad gives the meanings of those names for example in bhagavad gita one of the names of krishna is govinda and shila prabhupad explains that vinda means to give pleasure and go means the cows go also means uh, the earth go also means the senses of the devotees and krishna is govinda one who gives pleasure to the senses of the devotees how does krishna give pleasure to our senses 
when we in just few minutes will take darshan of shri shri radha murlidhar don't you feel happy seeing the beautiful forms of radha murlidhar how radha and krishna are standing giving us their beautiful darshan it's a vision of the spiritual world where krishna is standing in his three fold bending form tribhanga deh sundaram nakha dyuti sudhakaram amulya ratna bhushanam namami nanda nandana and the source of all beauty and the concentrated essence of all love and devotion is shrimati radharani and she is always standing with krishna giving us her own bhakti for krishna she is the source of all bhakti so when we see krishna with our eyes we feel pleasure on thursday evenings and on the weekends at the bhakti center and actually every day during mangal aarti now when adi purush prabhu with his guitar was so melodiously singing shri guru charana padma vaishala narottam das thakur the guru vandana prayers glorifying the spiritual master and also explaining to us in english the meaning of the bengali prayer don't we feel happy so when we hear nice sweet musical kirtan we we feel joy through our ears that's krishna govinda giving us pleasure through our karanendriya through our ears through our eyes netrendriya he gives us pleasure so different indriya means different senses krishna is giving us pleasure in the aarti when uh, perfume is offered to krishna some beautiful fragrance like sandalwood oil is offered or some fragrant flower like rose or mogra or jasmine is offered to krishna and then it is given to the devotees as prasad and we smell it or we smell the fragrance of the tulsi tulsi manjaris that have been offered at the lotus feet of murlidhar and varaha narsimha dev shaligram shila and lord gauranga when we experience the aroma the fragrance of the tulsi manjaris or the flowers or the different perfumes that have been offered to krishna and radharani we feel pleasure through our nose when we embrace the devotees then i will finally some day have the good fortune of meeting all of you in person and we will embrace it will feel so good we have been meeting each other virtually so when we embrace the devotees or when we are worshiping the deity we take nice sandalwood oil sesame oil or ghee and we massage the shaligram shila so when we touch krishna with our hands and we touch the devotees and embrace them we feel such joy shri pad ayendra prabhu one of the great inspirations in my life once a lady came to him in vrindavan and um, she was in her um i believe 40s and um, she had uh, um she was single due to some quirk of fate somehow she was in a relationship and then something happened and uh, but now she was in her 40s late 40s i believe and she came to shri pad ayendra prabhu because she had so much faith in him knowing that he was a pure devotee who had left everything the comforts and luxuries of the american life ripped his american passport into pieces and thrown it in the yamuna he went with a one way ticket to india staying there in the sweltering heat and the bone chilling cold of vrindavan just because it was shila prabhupad's desire that there should be 24 hours kirtan in the iskon vrindavan temple the krishna balram mandir to fulfill this one mission of shila prabhupad shri padayendra prabhu gave his entire life he would do kirtan for hours and hours and hours until he was able to develop a nice team where devotees worked in shifts and uh, he was successful in establishing the 24 hours kirtan he personally managed it for 24 years from 1986 to 2010 when he went back to the spiritual world my 
beloved spiritual master, Srila Radhanath Swami Maharaj, very famously said in his offering to Sri Padayandra Prabhu that every brick, every slab of marble in the Krishna Balram Mandir in Vrindavan, Discon Vrindavan, is forever reverberating with the heartfelt Kirtan of Sri Padayandra Prabhu. Think about this. Each and every brick and marble slab of Krishna Balram Mandir is forever reverberating with the transcendental sound vibrations of Sri Padayandra Prabhu's Kirtan. And Srila Radhanath Swami Maharaj says, as the sun of Aindra Prabhu sets in this mortal world, the sun of Aindra Prabhu has risen in Golok Vrindavan. <laughs> which, means, which means Maharaj said that he went back to Godhead. In fact, Srila Rupa Goswami writes that anyone who dies in Vrindavan will go back to Godhead. Therefore, I was so inspired by the wonderful example of His Holiness Kadamba Kanan Swami Maharaj. What a perfect life he led. Really, it's such an inspiration. Brings so much hope and joy to the heart when I contemplate about the life of His Holiness Kadamba Kanan Maharaj. As a physician, I'm a geriatrician and I also do end-of-life care, hospice and palliative care. And I see patients are so anxious, so fearful of death. Sometimes they go in denial, they don't want to hear about it. Or sometimes they desperately try to prolong life at the cost of medical futility, going through unnecessary treatments, which are really futile. But here is His Holiness Kadamba Kanan Swami Maharaj when he was diagnosed with stage 4 colon cancer really at the peak of his career. He was, I believe, 69 years old. He was an initiating spiritual master. Um, he was doing so many services, traveling to so many continents, countries and preaching, had so many disciples. He spoke wonderful Krishna Katha he led mesmerizing kirtans. He was a leader. He was a manager, author of books. He had all good qualities. And he had stood the test of time. Hare Krishna. That's an important consideration. Devotees like me are like a glow bomb. We like to show our little glow when it is dark. <laughs> And then in a flash of a second, we are gone. The light is gone. But devotees like Sri Padayandra Prabhu, Srila Bhakti Tiratha Swami Maharaj, Srila Kadamba Kanan Swami Maharaj, they are really like the sun, very steady, very dependable, and they have stood the test of time. We should put our faith in such devotees. Devotees who are sincere, who are deep, in their Krishna consciousness, in their spiritual practice, and who have stood the test of time. Hare Krishna. When he got the diagnosis of stage 4 colon cancer, he went to every temple where he had service, where he had disciples and well-wishers. He spent time with them, inspired them, gave them direction, gave them hope, gave them inspiration. And finally, he came to Vrindavan, following in the footsteps of our founder Acharya, Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada is Jagat Guru. He established 108 temples, centers, farm communities all over the world. From zero temples, zero centers, 208 temples. Yesterday I was talking to one disciple of Srila Prabhupada, His Grace Balabhadra Bhattacharya Prabhu here in Atlanta. Actually, yesterday we had our Rathyatra and now we have our Pani Hathi festival. So, Anand Bihari Prabhu doesn't have to worry today. I will surely end the class on time today because I have to rush. <laughs> oh I have to leave at the 7.50. No, 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 Prabhu. You're like son. You're very dependable. I'm like your son. 
<laughs> small kid compared to you so anyway balabhadra prabhu was telling me that shila prabhupada established the iskon temple in atlanta it started in 1973 shila prabhupada himself came here in uh, 1975 february but anyway this temple the iskon atlanta temple is the first temple in the state of georgia the gaurmita deities that shila prabhupada installed at iskon atlanta are the first installed deities in the entire state of georgia there was no temple before that in the whole state of georgia so shila prabhupada started he came here there was not a single devotee of krishna in this part of the world in the western hemisphere are krishna think about that you come to a continent north america there is not a single devotee of krishna and you are 70 years old your accent is difficult to understand you've got a heavy bengali accent you've never you have no experience of being abroad and you don't have zoom you don't have facebook in those days you don't even have internet to search for verses here is a 70 year old sadhu from vrindavan comes with a box of books shrimad bhagavatam and his bead bag and his beads and the hare krishna mahamantra and his the order of his spiritual master and in 11 years he has thousands of disciples more than 5000 initiated disciples thousands more who are following him inspired by him and 108 temples and centers shila prabhupada established but when shila prabhupada was at the end of his leela his manifest past times in this world shila prabhupada left everything and he ran back to vrindavan so many times if we read his holiness satswarup das goswami his beautiful book prabhupad leela amrit it's in seven volumes now so many times whenever shila prabhupad's health deteriorated shila prabhupad always expressed a desire i want to go home i want to go to vrindavan when shila prabhupad had the stroke he went to vrindavan in the late 1960s and in 1977 also when shila prabhupad's health deteriorated shila prabhupad went to vrindavan because shila rupa goswami writes in mathura mahatmya book that anyone who dies in vrindavan in the holy dham in mayapur dham or purushottam jagannath puri dham or shri vrindavan dham any devotee who dies goes back to god at in fact shila rupa goswami says anyone who dies even the insects and the animals who die in vrindavan they attain the supreme abode i have the verses if anyone is interested i can share them i'll share them with anand bihari prabhu so shila prabhupad as acharya is teaching us that we should take shelter of the holy dham the holy abode of the lord and that's exactly what kadamba kanan maharaj did he went to vrindavan stayed there and did wonderful kirtans gave wonderful discourses and his spiritual master his holiness jayadvaita swami maharaj he said i will stay with you till the end and they were together in vrindavan i actually met them met in the sense i had their darshan um, in kartik 2022 when i was there in vrindavan such a beautiful example shila bhakti tirth swami maharaj also went to the holy abode holy dham of gita nagri in pennsylvania so holy place shila prabhupad came there radha damodar are there cows are there devotees live there there is so much kirtan and katha going on there so it's a holy place so this is a very important principle that we should take shelter of krishna and krishna is such a wonderful lord in fact our chapter today is entitled wonderful krishna krishna is really wonderful he is govinda he gives pleasure to us through our different senses so we spoke about how krishna gives us pleasure through our eyes through our ears through our nose through our skin and through our tongue krishna prasad we eat sanctified food delicious food the uh, have you all tasted the wonderful sweets that are cooked for radha murlidhar and uh, that have been tasted by radha murlidhar when devotees get that mahaprasad it is so wonderfully tasty so krishna is wonderful in fact um, an adi purush prabhu can uh, can correct me uh, shila prabhupad uh, when he came to the us in those days there were no indian stores in the us in fact my guru maharaj shila radhanath swami maharaj says that the first indian he ever saw in his life 
was when he crossed the border from Pakistan into India. 19 years that Maharaj lived as a child in Chicago, he never once saw anyone from India. This is 1950s and 1960s. There weren't so many Indians here. There was no Indian store. So you could not go and buy rasgullas and gulab jams from anyway, we don't buy as devotees, uh, we make at home. But all those things were not there. So even if Srila Prabhupada wanted the ingredients to make the Indian sweets, things were very limited back in the 1960s. So Srila Prabhupada invented a sweet called Simply Wonderfuls. Adi Purush Prabhu, you, you know, Simply Wonderfuls. <laughs> Milk powder, powdered sugar, and one more thing, and cream. <laughs> so cream, powdered sugar, and uh, condensed milk powder. Uh, something like that. I'm, my wife has warned me not to speak recipes in my classes. She said, you never enter the kitchen. You don't know how to cook. And in the classes, you're talking about all these recipes. <laughs> but anyway, Simply Wonderfuls were Simply Wonderfuls. They were sweet balls, white in color, and uh, they were addictive. And so many people became devotees just by eating Simply Wonderfuls. So Krishna gives us pleasure through our tongue. That's why he's called Govinda. So Krishna has different names. He's called Madhusudan because he killed the demon Madhu. Krishna is called Rishikesh. Rishik means our senses and Ish means the master, the Lord. He's called Rishikesh because he's the master of our senses. So in this way, Krishna has many names. Nam Nam Akari Bahuda and Nicha Sarva Shakti. And all these names are all powerful. So here, Sri Gargacharya, Gargamuni is explaining the meaning of the name Vasudev. One who is the son of Maharaj Vasudev. So Vasudev is the father, Vasudev is the son, who is Krishna. Next verse, verse number 18. Bah uh, okay, so this way, uh, this way read, verse number 19. Eshavah Shreya Adhasyad Gopagokula Nandanaha Anena Sarva Durgani Yuyam Anjas Tarishatha To increase the transcendental bliss of the cowherd men of Gokul, this child will always act auspiciously for you. And by his grace only, you will surpass all difficulties. Hare Krishna. And just Tarishyatha, you'll easily cross all the problems of life. In Bhagavad Gita also Krishna says, Mat Chitta Sarva Durgani Mat Prasada Tarishyasi. I think this comes in the 18th chapter, if I remember correctly. Very beautiful um, statement by Krishna. Machitta Sarva Durgani Mat Prasada Tarishasi. Four things. Machitta means always be conscious of me, Krishna says. Therefore, Srila Prabhupada named our society the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Krishna Consciousness. We have to remember Krishna. We have to think of Krishna. We have to speak about Krishna. We have to hear about Krishna. We have to make Krishna the aim of our life. That is Krishna Consciousness. Because Krishna is simply wonderful. Krishna is our Lord and Master. And our natural eternal position is to be a sold out lover of Krishna. That is our position. To eternally serve Radha Murlidhar. So <clears throat> Krishna says, Machitta, always think of me. Sarva Durgani means all the difficulties of life, all the troubles of life. Mat Prasadat. Mat Prasadat means by my mercy, Tarishasi. You will overcome them. So Krishna is saying, always think of me, be Krishna conscious, and by my mercy, you will cross over and overcome all the difficulties and obstacles of life. This is Krishna's promise. We should have faith and we should accept this instruction. Mat Chitta, Sarva Durgani, Mat Prasada, Tarishasi. Always be conscious of me, Krishna says. Then by my mercy, you will overcome and cross over all the difficulties, all the troubles of life. Isn't that beautiful? So same thing. Shri Gargamuni is telling Krishna's father, Nanda Baba, your child is amazing. Text 20. Puranena Vrajapate Sadhavo Dasyu Pidhitah Arajake Rakshamana Jigyur Dasyun 
samedhitah o nanda maharaj as recorded in history when there was an irregular incapable government indra having been dethroned and when honest people were being harassed and disturbed by thieves this child appeared in order to curb the rogues and to protect the people and enable them to flourish this my dear friends is krishna's mission krishna protects the good people the good citizens and krishna corrects this is the divine department of corrections <laughs> we have department of corrections in the us krishna has his own department of corrections this department of correction can have unsolved cases can have cold cases can have unsolved uh, mysteries criminal mysteries but krishna knows everything vedaham samatitani krishna knows everything nothing is hidden from krishna we can escape from the laws of a particular country or state but no one ever has and no one ever will escape the laws of krishna because krishna is perfect krishna knows everything and krishna is all powerful avashyameva bhuktavyam kritam karma shubha shubham brihan naradi puran says avashyameva bhuktavyam kritam karma shubha shubham whatever shubh ashubh good bad things we do we have to face the consequences like lord jesus christ says as you sow so shall you reap whatever we do it will have an effect and we will have to face the effect of our own actions so krishna comes to punish and correct the miscreants those who give trouble to others the trouble makers krishna punishes them eventually and um he protects the devotees and he establishes dharma paritranaya sadhunam vinashaya cha duskritam dharma samsthapanarthaya sambhavami yuge yuge bhagavad gita krishna says his three missions to protect the devotees to punish the sinful people and to establish real dharma gargamuni saying your child will do all of this text 21 महाभागे पितृं कुर्वन्ति मानवा नारयो एतान विष्णु पक्षान इवासुरा डीमन्स के नॉट हार्म द डेमी गॉड्स हू ऑलवेज हैव लॉर्ड विष्णु ऑन देअर साइड सिमिलरली एनी पर्सन और ग्रुप अटैच्ड टू ऑल ऑस्पेशियस कृष्णा के नॉट बी डिफीटेड बाय एनिमीज इन भगवदगीता कृष्णा से कौनते प्रति जानी ही न मे भक्त प्रणश्य थी माई डिवोटी विल नेवर बी लॉस्ट never be lost i will always be there to protect my devotees and in shrimad bhagavatam also it is said um ete cham sakala pumsa krishna stu bhagwan swayam indrari vyakulam lokam mridayanti yuge yuge when indrari the enemies of indra they trouble and the whole world becomes vyakul becomes distressed because of the demons mridayanti yuge yuge at that time krishna comes to protect the devotees and to punish the miscreants in the purport it is written Shri Prabhupad has especially indicated in this connection that just as Lord Krishna's associates could not be defeated by Kansa, so his modern-day devotees will not be defeated by their demoniac opponents, nor will the Lord's devotees be defeated by the internal enemies, the lusty materialistic senses. So, my dear friends of the Bhakti Center, please listen carefully. We have got two sets of enemies: enemies without, those who oppose us in Bhakti, those who distract us from Bhakti. because bhakti is the center of our life bhakti center and the second set of enemies are the internal enemies what is inside our mind lust anger greed envy pride false ego these things take us away from krishna but if we pray to krishna if we chant hare krishna mahamantra constantly hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama 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 hare hare with a prayerful heart that krishna please purify me i want to love you i want to serve you please protect me from these enemies internal enemies and external enemies then krishna will protect text 22 tasmanand kumaro yam narayana samo gunaih shriya kirtyanu bhavena tat karmasu na vismaya therefore onanda maharaj this child of yours krishna is as good as narayan narayana samo gunaih he is equal to narayan 
in his transcendental qualities, opulence, name, fame, and influence, he is exactly like Narayan. Thus, you should not be astonished by his activities. He lifted the Govardhan mountain on the pinky finger of his left hand for seven days and seven minutes. Don't be astonished. He is God. He is Krishna. He is Narayan. Nanda here reports to the cowherd men the concluding remarks of Sri Gargamuni, who spoke at the secret birth ceremony of Lord Krishna. Oh, we are supposed to stop at verse 22 or 23. Let me see. 23. Okay. So verse 23. It adhamam samadishya garge chaswa griham gate manne narayana syam sham krishnam aklishta karinam krishnam aklishta karinam krishna keeps us protected from miseries so nanda maharaj continued to the brajwasis the residents of rindavan that after shri gargarishi spoke these words to me and returned home I began to consider that Krishna, who keeps us free from trouble, is actually an expansion of Lord Narayan. Manne Narayana Syamsha. He's, he's Narayan. He's an expansion of Narayan. I began to consider like that. So Nanda Maharaj spoke these words to the Brajvasis. So these were some of the beautiful verses of Srimad Bhagavatam 10th Canto and some reflections that came. So I will stop here. Shrimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Jagad Guru Shila Prabhupada ki jai. All the wonderful, sweet, sincere, dedicated devotees of the Bhakti Center New York ki jai. Hare Thank you, Adi Gadara Prabhu. Wonderful class, simply wonderful. There's a question in the chat from Angel. Okay. What is the Bhakti Krishna view of passive euthanasia, which is the withdrawal of medical treatments? Hare Krishna. That's a Hare Krishna question, yes. Um, according to Krishna Bhakti, Krishna Consciousness, life and death, both are in the hands of Krishna. Krishna Prema Mai Radha, Radha Prema Mayo Hari, Jeevane Nidhane Nityam Radha Krishna Gatir Mama Radha Krishna Pranamora Yuga Laki Shor Jeevane Marane Gati Aranahi Mor. In both these verses, <coughs> Jeevane Nidhane Gatir. Radha Krishna Gatir Mama and Jivane Marane Gati Aranahimur. In both these verses, we see that life and death is in Krishna's hands. Srila Bhakti Vana Thakur also prays, Maro Bira Kobi Jo Ichato Hara Nitya Dasa Prati Tuva Adhikara. Srila Bhakti Vana Thakur, Srila Jiva Goswami in Yugalashtakam, and Srila Narutam Das Thakur. In this beautiful prayer, Radha Krishna Pranam or Yoga Lakishwar, Jivane Marane, Marane means death, Gatir Aranayam. All of them are saying that life and death is in Krishna's hands. This is the philosophy of Krishna Bhakti. In Bhagavad Gita, also Krishna says, Mrutyu Sarva Haras Cha Aham. I am death, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita. Mrutyu means death. Mrutyu Sarva Haras Cha Aham. I am there. Aham means I. Krishna, I am death. I meet you in the form of death. So the Krishna Bhakti um, philosophy is that we don't take death in our hands. Just like we cannot create someone, we don't have the right to take life. Whether it is euthanasia or whether it is abortion. According to Krishna Bhakti, these things are very sinful. One should not do. However, as a physician who deals with end of life and palliative care, hospice care, I can tell you that according to Krishna consciousness, it is the duty of a doctor to relieve the suffering. To relieve the sufferings mm -hmm. of others. Like it is said, if you go to the Mayo Clinic, you go to Cooks County in um, Illinois also, Outside the Cook County Hospital, there is a very beautiful inscription 
which I like very much. It's one of the tenets that we follow in Krishna consciousness. Listen carefully what it says. It does not matter what your religion is. It does not matter what your nationality is. You suffer and that is enough. That's enough. You suffer and I'm here for you. So it is the duty to relieve the pain and sufferings as best possible, as much as possible medically. But to end someone's life, that doesn't fit in our philosophy because we cannot give life. How can we take life? And Krishna says, I am the Krishna will come. Our job is to relieve the pain and suffering the best we can. And death will come. Death will come. Srila Bhakti Tirth Maharaj never asked for euthanasia. Srila Kadamakanan Swami Maharaj did not ask for euthanasia. And death comes easily in the form of Krishna for a devotee. I'll tell you, when Kadamakanan Maharaj, his colon was completely blocked with the cancer, he could have asked for a palliative colostomy. Just, just do a diverting colostomy. So there's a complete blockage in the rectum because of the tumor. So before that, proximally, you take a loop of bowel out and create a stoma, create a colostomy. So you are basically um, creating a stoma before the obstruction. So now you can again start eating. It's a palliative procedure. Eventually the cancer is going to get you, but it will prolong life and make you more comfortable. Kadamakaran Maharaj did not opt for it. Instead, what did he do? This is inspiring. Kadamakanan Maharaj stopped eating. <laughs> there is no need to have bowel movements. His colon was blocked. He stopped eating. All he was doing was drinking water and doing bhajan, chanting Hare Krishna. And very peacefully, he left this world. With these extraordinary efforts, he could have lived maybe a few weeks more. But what is the use? There is no quality of life. So a devotee is not afraid of death. And a devotee is not eager to get death also. Whatever sufferings comes, that is because of our karma. In Srimad Bhagavatam, it is said, Tattenu kampam susam ikshamano bhunjana eva atma kritam vipakam. Vipakam means sufferings. They come atma krit. They come because of our own activities. Nobody likes to hear this, but what to do? This is a fact. We suffer because of our own activities in this world, not activities of just this lifetime. We could have been a rapist or a murderer in our previous lives. We have had millions of births, my dear friends. Our vision is tunnel vision. We only look at this life. But we have all, all of us have been rapists. All of us have been murderers. All of us have been thieves. We have done so many sinful activities in this life. What to speak of previous lives where we did not have God consciousness. This is a fact. This is what our philosophy says. It's a fact and the scriptures again and again show this to us. Dhritarashtra had killed 100 uh, birds in his previous life. So he had 100 sons and they all died. Hare Krishna. Mahabharata says this. So there is law of karma. We cannot understand it. We can only understand that what happens to me, it is a token punishment that I'm getting because of my previous sinful activities. I cannot give life, so I will not take life. But it is the duty of doctors to relieve the pain and sufferings. And sometimes while relieving the pain and sufferings, we give medicines, painkillers like morphine. We give uh, medicines uh, to really re relieve the anxiety like benzodiazepines. And they, in a way, uh, hasten death. And that's okay because you're doing it as comfort measures. But you're not, that's not euthanasia. That's not killing someone. Because if we kill someone, and we give death to someone before it is time, before it is their time, then that person will have to suffer in the, in the next life. Suppose someone has a jail sentence, someone is incarcerated for two years and they get out in one year. What's going to happen? They'll get, when they are caught, they will get even more punishment. So we don't take death because we cannot give life. Life and death is in Krishna's hands. But as doctors, it is our duty to make people as comfortable and as pain-free as possible. I hope this helps. Hare Krishna. <clears throat> Thank you for, for this red pill. Hare it's a red pill class, Sunday morning. <laughs> this is a Sunday morning affirmation. 
Uh, would anyone else like to speak? We have uh, three more minutes. Uh, Arjuna Prabhu, Adipusha Prabhu. Adipusha Prabhu, can you get Arjuna Prabhu uh, to say something in glorification of Krishna? He's right behind you. Arjuna, you want to say something? Okay, Hare Krishna. He says he's okay, Hare Krishna. Jai. Nice. Good. Thank you, Arjuna Prabhu. Thank you. Interesting subject, suffering. I was just reading yesterday, Sri Prabhupada was saying, a certain amount of suffering is coming to us. You can't stop it. Nobody seeks it, but it comes. A certain amount of suffering will come to you, no matter where you go, no matter what your service is, no matter what your circumstances are, that is coming to me. So it said, we don't seek pleasure or try to avoid pain, but we try to do God's will, come what may. Do God, Prahlad Marj even says, as soon as we begin our endeavor for happiness, our suffering begins. That's so profound. Because I'm beginning my endeavor for happiness, I begin to suffer. So the main thing is devotional service is what we focus on. And um, we don't exactly change the circumstance, but we, we change our attitude, how we're responding to what's happening, right? And it's a very interesting shift because in normal life, everybody is seeking pleasure and avoiding pain. Well, this difficult situation, I will go away. I will do this. I will take a, a drug. I will, you know, we had one God brother at New Vrindavan. He said, I was here in the summer. Now winter is coming. I always get headaches. I cannot take the cold. I will go to Florida. He went to Florida. Then he sent me a letter. He said, I got to Florida. As soon as I got there, coconut fell on my head. I got big headache and fractured skull. <laughs> he was trying to avoid headache by going to Florida. But if it's going to come, it's going to come no matter where you are. So what do we do? Krishna, how can I serve you under this circumstance? Not just tolerate this, but thank you for it. Tateno Kampam Shishimikshimanyo, like Prabhu Prabhu is saying, this is coming due to my past misdeeds. I deserve a lot worse. Now let me go on in my service. So if we have a relationship with Guru and we say, how can I serve you? And he gives you service, then you focus on that. Arjun went to the battlefield, not a picnic, the war zone. Right? So we have an interesting philosophy. It's very radical. And sometimes people are not ready to hear it. But that's what we've heard from Guru. So that's what we repeat. Suffering will come. Don't worry about avoiding suffering. Don't worry about seeking pleasure. Figure out how to serve Krishna now, today. Thanking Krishna for everything, just the way it is. How can I serve you? Well, glory to Shil Prabhupada. This is our real um, wisdom and reality. Oh, is the Prabhupada and Krishna. Sorry to speak so long. Thank you. Sir. Thank you, Adi Pusha Prabhu. We have a little announcement here from Andrea. Andrea, would you like to read your message? Let's all bless Andrea's family. Um, Hare Krishna, everyone. I just wanted to share that my uncle, Jaime Suarez, left his body yesterday. Um, he said that he was an atheist. However, in his own way, he was very kind to Paul and I who think of ourselves as devotees in some way. And I humbly ask if all of you could please pray for his soul, perhaps chant a Maha Mantra for him, just so that in some way he can receive the mercy of the devotees. Um, and we just pray that in his next lifetime, he's able to have more association and that he's able to be closer to having love of Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. My dear Shri Prabhupada, my dear Shri Radha Murlidhar, please bless Uncle Suarez and bring him closer and closer to you. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare, Hare Krishna.